Hey, Alex, how you doing, man? Doing good. How are you? Good. Um, does, does things, uh, I, I guess I'll just start, do, do, do things feel any differently going into Big 12 play? I mean, you only have one non-conference game. Uh, is this just sort of a weird opening to conference play this year? I, I think overall the, the thing you look at is just the, and, and you always believe the practice is important. I think this year um, you, you times that by 100. You know, you, you have to be able to, um, and you never can quite simulate exactly what, what, what goes on on a game day in practice. You know, but you got to look at it. You know, we, we started back in the middle of January, or should be January, I wish January, uh, July. Um, and, and so we've been going for a couple of months now. And in, in, in you know, typical fashion, I think to your point, is you'd have a couple of games on your belt uh, as, you, as you approach this, this week. And so, you know, what, what again becomes as paramount as it's ever going to be is, is those practice reps. You have to be able to learn lessons in practice, whether it's penalties, uh, wh whether it's, uh, um, you know, uh, response to adversity. You know, you don't have the cumulative game reps to kind of draw from. You know, obviously, you know, years pass and all those things, but the, the 2020 version of us doesn't. And so um, that, that's what practice has turned into, is, is trying to simulate kind of the emotional response to, to a good play and how you're going to respond to an emotional response to a bad play. Because, um, again, I think to your point is, is everything gets cranked up another level when you're talking about conference play and playing Power 5 football. And so um, that, that, uh, th th those practice reps are, are uh, increasingly and increasingly important. Thanks a lot, Alex. Okay, Eric Bailey and then Bob Prisbillo. Hey, Alex. I wanted to ask you about Pat Fields. Uh, you know, selected as a team, team captain this season. How much did he have that leadership trait when you arrived, and how much has that accelerated over the past two seasons? Well, I think it has accelerated. I, I think a lot of times, you know, what, what happens with guys, and then, you know, until you're playing good football, until you're, you're, you're a – uh, consistent member of, of any organization, but obviously, you know, specific to us defensively, you know, um, the, the the guys that have the biggest voice are the guys that you know one play and then number two uh, play at a consistent level. You know, the it's very difficult to 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 be a leader, uh, and if if you're you know constantly on the roller coaster in terms of you know one doing the things you know right both on and off the field, but uh, you know n n number two is. Uh, if, if you're one of those guys that uh, um, is, is taking the, the appropriate opportunities to be a leader, which look more like a positive role as opposed to a negative role. Um, and so, you know, what, what Pat has done is he's coupled it, you know, the, the fact that he's played and, and coupled with, uh, you know, his, his ability to, to do things right uh, consistently, both on and off the field. And what, what happens in the, those moments is, uh, or in those instances, is you got, you got a, uh, uh, a voice that, that guys respond to. And so he's taking advantage of that. Um, it, uh, it suits him. It, it suits us. We need him to be that guy for us. You know, so, sometimes, uh, you know, the course of uh, my career, you kind of cringe sometimes when you call a guy later and say, wait a second. You know, I don't know that he, he does enough things right to, to, to be the leader of your, your, your defense or your position room, something like along those lines. But uh, thrilled for him and thrilled for us that, uh, you know, quality guy that the guys uh, uh, respond to. Thanks, Alex. Hey, Bob Frisbillo and then Ryan Aber. Yeah, Alex, you talked a lot during preseason camp about cross-training. Have you maybe stumbled upon one or two players that as you were doing that, they were actually a more natural fit at that second spot compared to where you had them? Yeah, no, I think it's a good question. I, I think I, I kind of circle back to the, you know, the game or the lack of game rep, uh, you know, kind of uh, – a reality that we, we find ourselves in. You, you know, you see some guys that show well in practice. I think probably the biggest thing we've seen is is some guys that that have been able to to kind of put that on their plate um, that that they otherwise you know may, may have surprised us that way. Uh, you know, uh, could, could they handle playing both? You know, uh, as simple as being the Mike and the Will linebacker, just because the, the picture is a little bit different and the formation adjustments and some of those things. You know, strong safety and free safety. So even though it you know, some of those are kind of minute changes, you know, you know, how much these guys can put on their plate. Um, you know, been, been over, you know, overall pretty impressed. You know, a corner moving to a safety, a safety moving to a corner. So I think to highlight somewhat specifically, I think we got to get into to some games and kind of, you know, some, some more game reps under our belt 
Uh, but I, you saw Isaiah Thomas, I think, you know, kind of stands out just because he made some plays in that first game. You know, he's a guy that actually did it on, on a Saturday playing, you know, interior defensive line. You know, a guy that's been a career guy on the edge, and he'll do both for us as, as we go. And so uh, been, been, uh, been pleased with that. And, again, you know, would highlight him just because he's done it in the game. Yeah, let's go to Ryan Haber and then Joe Bettner. Yeah, Alex, you've talked about a, a couple of these guys recently, uh, the Pat Fields and Isaiah Thomas uh, specifically, but a, a lot of contributors on your defense are, seem to be from Tulsa this year. And I know part of that is just uh, the coincidence of those guys you know, doing what they needed to do. But how important is that area of the state uh, for you? And, and just what have you seen uh, out of that region you know, since you've been around recruiting. Yeah, no, and that, that that's a that's a an, an area that that you know would would not just be a regional area. You know, going back to history and in, in uh, uh, being at other places. I mean, that that when you talk about some of the elite programs in Tulsa, you know, regardless of where you're at, you know, on on either coast, uh, it, it's an area that uh, you're you're conscious of, and you you know that there's high level of football being being played there, and high level guys coming out of there. Um, you know, you mentioned the guys that uh, you know we we have right now, and and, and you're right. I mean, it, it it's uh, um, it's an area for us that uh, you know I think sometimes the misnomer you know in 2020 so much is you know national recruiting and and um, it, it's it's driven by websites and those things, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think sometimes there's a misnomer as if you know our, our life gets so much easier if we could get a guy from you know hours and hours and hours away. Uh, and thousands of miles away, as opposed to uh, getting a quality player, uh, you know, down the street, only a couple hours away, type of deal. And so, um, and and I say that's a misnomer because you know if we could sign everybody out of the state of Oklahoma every year, tell, tell me why we wouldn't want to do that. Now they have to have you know the the, the um, they they have to play up to a to a standard that that's you know uh, uh, worthy of Oklahoma. But there, there's certainly uh, a, a number of guys year to year that 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 that's the case. But uh, um, no, that, that's an area that, uh, you know, we're, we're constantly evaluating um, and an area that uh, you talk about quality football, both coached and played, that, uh, you know, we, we uh, uh, appreciate the fact that it's in our state. Appreciate it, Alex. Okay, Joe Bettner and then Keegan Renault. To stay on the recruiting for a second, Alex, you guys obviously had a home game already and a, and a bye week and just with – that time that would have probably been spent bringing guys onto campus for recruiting trips. Uh, how different has that been with just not having that, I guess, in-person contact on a, on a game day? And uh, how are you guys staying engaged with those recruits? Well, it, it couldn't get a whole lot more different, honestly. You know, most bye weeks are, are spent at least a couple of days on the road, or at least portion portion of your staff on the road. You mentioned game day. You know, both pregame and postgame, get a chance to to see some guys. And you know, one of the things that that you're constantly, you know, when you're on the phone with guys and, and FaceTime with guys, you're constantly saying, "Come to a game, come to a game, come to a game." Just so, you know, because you have such a great product and such a great venue here at Oklahoma um, that that you want to sell. Um, and so that that. Uh, like I said, couldn't couldn't be any more different. You know, I I will say, you know, when you're talking about the recruiting side of things, I mean, there's there's always two sides of it. One, it's it's bringing guys in to to sell them uh, on you, and then the other side of it is the evaluation aspect of things. And so that that both those things are, are different, and and uh, equally so in terms of what side uh, uh, both those sides being important. And so you know, if if evaluating guys. Uh, remotely uh, was the the best way to get an evaluation of, of individuals that you you, you know are, are looking to, to possibly bring into your program. We I, 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 we would have done this a long time ago. Video conferencing is not new, um, and so that that aspect of things is, is different. You know, it, it's you know watching video. Some guys aren't playing. Some guys haven't played yet. Um, it's you know you know they they didn't have spring track you know and so you're trying to see how guys developed you didn't have the summer camp circuit and so that aspect of things uh, that is just a critical critical piece that's the NFL about evaluations and all the the you know the misses they have on draft day and and you know they have ample amounts more information 
than a college coach will ever have. Um, you know, so again, just the, the evaluation aspect of things is, is something that uh, is different, and we we gotta we gotta fight and battle uh, to, to to make sure that uh, we're making the appropriate ones. You know, just despite the circumstances, uh, and then equally again, those guys we've already evaluated uh, to to continue to develop relationship remotely, and it, it's it's one that uh, has always been an element to it. Um, because obviously you can only see them so, so many times during the, the, the course of the year. They got their season, so that's not, uh, you know, probably in a lot of ways that, that's the one that's most similar because you do make so many phone calls and text messages and stuff like that uh, as you develop relationships. But you, you do miss the, uh, the, the, the one-on-one and you miss the game day, and so that's just something that uh, it's not going away anytime soon, and so we, we got to do the best with it um, um, and, and, and find a way to uh, sign the best class possible. We'll go to Keegan Renault and then James Hale. Alex, you talked during preseason camp about not wanting guys to be the same players they were a year ago. And the product on the field, obviously, in the first game, I think is something that you wanted to see. But just the overall culture of this defense, is it, is it at a place that you, you want it to be at right now? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, the limited evaluation, you know, as, as you go into to only game two of the, the season. I. You know, it, it's probably more enjoyable to go to practice. I mean, honestly, I mean, that, that's probably a silly statement to make. But um, and really what I mean by that is just, you know, the the you hear other voices kind of saying the, 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 the things that, you know, you as a coaching staff were maybe the only one saying uh, a year ago, at least at this point. You know, as the season went on, obviously, you know, got the, the, and, and, and I still commend that, that group in terms of the 2019 group on the buy-in. Um, but but just being able to to coach more uh, of the details of the position, coach more of the fundamentals of the position, coach coach more uh, may, maybe less about big picture scheme stuff, how we're going to get lined up, and and so I just I, I think you know what what it gives you is a chance to. Um, because I w- they want to be coached different. They don't want to be coached the same way. You know? and, and one of the things that, that when we talk about being a different guy is we're talking about not being content with just being where you're supposed to be. You know, we probably spent too much time. You know, you got to evaluate it. You look at it as a coach. We spent too much time just trying to get guys where they're supposed to be. Oh, by the way, there's a play that has to be made at the end of that play, you know, and I, I don't know that we did a good enough job. And, I, and maybe you can't do a good enough job in the first year. I don't know. But, but um, you know, we got to we got to assume you can and certainly you can do a better job in t- year two is, is saying, okay, th- this is your job. But what's the mission? Okay, the mission is the football. The mission is to make that play. The, the, you, you just can't say, I got my job done. You, you other ten, go make a play. Um, and so I've seen that difference. Again, it's in practice, and that's a big deal, right? And, and, and I don't want to – there's no one that makes a bigger deal about practice, uh, at least that's our aim, than, than, than we do as a coaching staff. Um, but, but, you know, now it's got to translate on, on, on Saturdays, um, as, uh, specifically this one. Thank you. James Hale and then John Hoover. Alex, I hope things are going well. And uh, uh, Alex, you know, you've often talked about you didn't feel like you had great depth at, at the safety position or in the secondary. Uh, but you have a bunch of young guys, and some of those guys missed because of, you know, we assume COVID or whatever, but they should be back this week. If you have all your personnel, do you feel like you've solved your depth problems and you have more depth you can trust, or are you still concerned about it? I think we have more potential depth, you know. Um, Without question, um, I, I think uh, you know. To your point, we, we've we've missed some guys at times. Um, a 14 days for a young football player. Um, I think about some guys that that you know are taking a year off of football. I, you know, take 14 days off. I you know, God bless you if you can take a year off and, and be, be you know. And obviously, every situation is different. So I, I don't I don't mean anything by that. But um, but you know. To, to lose guys in, in, in that, that, that that's, a, that's a big deal. And that's something that you just don't make up in two or three days uh, type of thing. And so, no, potentially, I think we do. I think we, we uh, uh, still have uh, uh, a long way to go to, to, to you know, match the depth that we kind of envision. Certainly, the numbers are more than, than a year ago. Um, but, uh, no, it's not where it needs to be just yet. Thanks. Okay, John Hoover and then Brandon Drum. Hey Alex, um, Jaden Davis had a lot on him. I thought last year, as the you know young cornerback, depth kind of began to dwindle all season until uh, the end of the season. Obviously, how do you how do you think he handled that? 
his role last year, and then how do you think he's taken to his new role this year as a starter? Yeah, I, I think at times I think, you know, probably was content in playing. Uh, I think maybe midway through the year, we kind of accuse him of that um, as, as opposed to just trying to get better week in and week out. And that, that's what a lot of times young, young players do. You kind of accept your role. You're excited that you have a role. Um, and I, I don't know that we, you know, game six to game 10 saw a jump as a guy who's played a lot of football for us. And so that was a major, major emphasis point over the course of the off season. Um, and, and obviously we need to spend as much time when it was a normal off season. But, you know, even at the fall camp, OK, you coming back as a guy that's going to you know, fight to be a starter in this program or, or, or are you content with just being the guy that kind of had a limited role as we went through things. And so uh, I will say this in the last you know, couple of weeks, I've really uh, been impressed with him. Um, and, and, and a guy that I think uh, uh, certainly showed some flashes last year uh, of, of being a, a quality corner in this conference and, and a guy that uh, we need to be one for us uh, this year. And so, uh, you know, less on the potential side and, and more on the doing side. But again, he's got to go do it in games on a more consistent level than he, than he did a year ago. Thank you. Appreciate it. Brandon Drum and Kerry Murdoch. Hey, Alex. Thanks for doing this. Um, a lot of your guys have talked about not being the player they were last year, and they keep saying that you keep reiterating that as a coach and then obviously as a player as well. Um, what, in your mind, can you kind of walk us through the intricacies of what that is yeah. to you? Obviously, that's play, but is, it, is there more to it than just play on the field? Well, I think it, it, for every individual guy, it's, it's based on where you are, you know, development-wise, maturity-wise, all those things. If, if I was a guy that, you know, contributed limited on, on special teams last year, then the, the expectation is that that role for you this year is not going to be good enough. Right? That was for the 2019 version of Oklahoma. You know, if, if you're a guy that, that we just mentioned, Jaden, you, you played in, at times, you added some depth to the position, um, you got some, uh, you know, work as a freshman. Well, now, now, now what's the sophomore version of you? And, we, you know, trying to create that, that, that sense of – and if you were a 14-game starter last year for us, you know, but you didn't find yourself an all all conference team, all right? Are we? Are, are, is that the expectation at Oklahoma? And, and was, you know, we, we win, you know, compete for Heisman trophies on offense, but we're okay being 14 games starter. We just, I would just want to be a starter. I mean, as long as I'm out there, I'll be fine. I, I, what, what am I doing, right, to contribute to uh, one from an individual standpoint, right? You know, what, what's the expectations of my career? Uh, as a member of this defense, and then also collectively is saying, okay, well, well, you know, if, if we, we, you only get better by making more plays. I mean, that's that's the reality of it. And so, uh, if if I'm a guy that uh, again was uh, uh, you know a Pat Fields, we just mentioned him, you know, that, that that played a lot for us last year, played good football, right? Needs to have more production. So every individual guy comes at it from a different. Laurent Stokes played good football for us. Excited about Laurent. He's got to make more plays for us. Right? Nick Benito. Excited about them, got to make more plays for us. And so just, just that constant emphasis on understanding that. And again, as an individual, don't you want to make more of, an, of a, a, being more of a productive member? Because it, it helps you on, on, uh, from an individual standpoint uh, uh, as well. And then you know, one of the things is, OK, what, what skill do you have, possess this year that you did not have at this year, last, or should mean last year this time? You know, it's, 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 it's thumbs up or thumbs down. And, and practice is a pretty good indicator of it. And the chief indicator, obviously, is, is game days. And, and so uh, that, that, that's going to prove itself as, as we go. Um, but uh, no, I think every, everybody comes from that, that, a, a different angle. Um, but but the, the reality is, and, and the goal for each guy, the, regardless of what your role was a year ago uh, or how you played for us, uh, we need better. Um, and, and the film tells us that. Uh, as, as we go back and evaluate things. Okay, Kerry Murdoch. Hey, Alex. Uh, I was wondering if you could kind of give us a peek behind uh, on how Ronnie Perkins is handling things. I mean, obviously a guy that you know everybody knows has a ton of potential, but just you know, obviously he was in a situation he probably could have opted out if he wanted to, but stuck with it, wants to play. Um, and, and I'm sure as a coach, you want to see him out on the field. And, is able to make for you. What, how has that kind of, I don't know, played out behind the scenes? Has it, has it been a positive? No, it has. And I think he's, he's made it one. Um, you know, if, if we're all judged by the, the worst thing we do in life, then, then you know, my, my goodness, I, I, I don't know that, uh, uh, you know, any of us would, would uh, 
uh, and like to see it plastered, uh, you know, over the national media, you know. But that's that's the world we live in, and, and you got to, you know, the the, react, the reality is there's no ducking it, you know. But what you do, you know, we talk about event plus response equals outcome. There's an event, okay. What's your response going to be? Ultimately, that, that's what your, your response is going to be, you know, based on what outcome that you want. You know, he, he wants to be one of the best players that played at Oklahoma, right? That, that, that's what he does. And, and so uh, he's, can he do it this Saturday? No. And, and, but in terms of his work ethic, in terms of his want to, in terms of his leadership approach, um, uh, you know, when, when, when guys, um, you know, have issues, you know, what, what families do is they put their arm around them and say it's not okay. Okay, but at the same token, you say, okay, you're a member of this family, and we're going to stick by each other, we're going to stand by each other, um, and and um, we're, we're going to see it through. You know, and we're, and we're all going to be on the other side of this thing in a more positive direction. And and so to say he's a leader in our program, yeah, he is. He's a leader on this defense. I need him. Our our, our defense needs him, um, and and thrilled uh, that that he, he's a. Uh, uh, you know he's part of us. Um, now he's not part of us on Saturday, and so we got to pick up the the, the slack. That's the expectation. Um, but a day in day out basis, uh, he's he's Ronnie Perkins uh, from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, he's an Oklahoma Sooner, and he's a dang good one. Appreciate that, Alex. Okay, and last question, Joey Helmer. Yeah, Alex, Kansas State kind of always has this reputation of being one of the uh, physical, the, the most physical team in the Big 12. Given the uh, the, cl the climate right now with uh, the lead up to the season and everything, any concerns about matching that physicality, and especially up front this weekend? No, I, I think the concern stems from me, me turning on the film from a year ago and, and watching us get completely outplayed by that program. And so, you know, it, it, it took uh, all of one game to earn complete respect for that coaching staff um, and, and how they play. Um, and, and, you know, uh, again, I, I stick to, 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 you know, obviously there's a lot of stuff that goes into the offseason. So let's, let's stick to facts. And the facts are that film. I mean, that, that's what we're drawing from and saying that when I watch that film, I, I see a, a poorly coached team on defense. Uh, from Oklahoma, I see a very well-coached team on offense. That pains me to say it, but the facts are the facts. And, and I thought from a physical standpoint, we, we, we certainly did not allow physical, uh, nor did we match it a year ago. And so, uh, you know, what, what, what shows up this, this weekend uh, is obviously the 2020 version of all of us. Um, but, uh, no, could, could not uh, respect them more, and then they, they flat-earned it uh, a year